I think really the hashtag Me Too movement, what it really did for women in general, is it made a space that was a little bit anonymous, but not anonymous because it was in the online space, especially mm -hmm. on Twitter, yeah. where women could discover that they weren't alone. Yeah. And I, I hashtagged, hashtag me too, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you my story. It's um, when I had, was a brand new Muslim, and, and of course the hashtag me too movement, let's, let's define it, sort of, kind of sort of define it, was all about women saying or, or, or standing up and saying, yeah, that happened to me too. Yeah, that happened to me too. And for some women, they started to judge their experience. Is my experience mm -hmm. bad enough for me to go hashtag me too or yeah. not? Yeah, I and um, I think that was an important awareness for women where they said, if, if I felt wrong, if I felt, um, I can't think of the word right now, but if I felt violated if i felt violated mm -hmm. then i am hashtag me too mm -hmm. so i was a brand new muslim mm -hmm. and as a brand new muslim one i told you in our earlier conversation yeah. that i had put on hijab before islam yeah. because I, I felt it was and you know i was fighting the objectification of women etc etc so now i'm a brand new muslim i've been a muslim for not quite a year yet i don't think and i had gotten a job working in an, a restaurant run by muslim people mm -hmm. okay this was 1980 1985 and I would go to work every day and uh, you know work or whatever and then go home and I was really really struggling I was trying to it's a new convert thing I was trying to learn my religion and deal with my life my family and, and make some money so I could pay my gas so I could get to school and things yeah. like that I was at work one day and there was a woman and a man their brother and sister and the uh, the woman, the woman, the Muslim woman, she said to me, um, she said to me, you know, my brother's back hurts. My brother's back is hurting him. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. sorry to hear that. So uh, she said to me, yeah, my, so my brother's back hurts. And I said, okay. And she said, maybe, maybe he needs a massage. Okay, so you're getting this story. I'm standing there. She says, my brother is, my sister, my brother is a back hurt. She was a, an immigrant woman Muslim. And I, I was really confused because as a new convert, I was really open and trusting yes. of the Muslim community. Why are you telling me? And I, yeah, why are you telling me about your brother's back? I don't care. And um, I said, okay. And she said, he needs a massage. And I think you should give him a massage. What? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I quit. The job. You know, I said... I said, I was really, in, I couldn't believe it. I said, but he's not, I said, I was you still very naive. The and I said, but he's not, but I can't, but I can't, I don't touch. You, you don't know, like, know the what? language. Yeah, I didn't have the language. And he, she said to me, he's your brother, sister. He's just oh, like your brother. Actually, he's your brother. So yeah, you give him yeah, massage. Exactly. Oh my God. So I think that, and, and something like this for many women feels like that's too small to tweet. Mm. But that was really, for a, a brand new Muslim, the kind of bullying and ugliness there, it, be, it belongs in that Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. That thing of, you are my, I get to harass you because I am more powerful. I'm your boss. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I probably he was looking to, you know, for a wife or whatever, you know, the sort of. That was the next thing that, she was going to say. Right. That was the next thing. Testing me out to see, you know, how American am I? That's the other weird thing that goes on in Muslim communities. But mm -hmm. so I think for a Muslim woman, and obviously... That, again, that story is a story that I wonder, like, do, how do people feel about that story? Is, does it qualify as Me Too? Yeah. For me, it qualifies. I, I had to quit my job. I quit my job the next day. I wasn't able to stay at work. I, I became a flat broke. I didn't have money. I was looking for a job at that time in 1980, whatever I said it was, six, mm -hmm. in hijab. And I, I mean, I was still a college student too, right? Yeah. So I didn't have... Um, it was really tough. It was really hard. And yeah. so the ramifications on women of actions like this are much more than just that moment in the, mm. that moment of abuse or harassment. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think as you're speaking, I'm just thinking of um, women who've been bullied 
into accepting proposals mm -hmm. or considering brothers. It's not on that level. It's not even on that scale. But for some reason, that's what came to my mind. I know so many sisters who were told by their walis, you're divorced. You're not going to find anybody else. Take this brother. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, he's a good brother. You know, why are you saying no? And all this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I actually know women who got married because of that pressure. Right to somebody who was not suitable, who was not compatible, who ended up actually, you know, abusing them in right. turn. Um, and I think what you said about bullying um, and the power dynamic. It's, it's all power about dynamic. that it's power about dynamic. Power. It's and all is, about that power dynamic. If we say that it's more about power than gender, mm -hmm. the gender that normally has the power is men, mm -hmm. right? In general, because we live in the society that we live in. However... That power can also be hold, held by a woman over mm -hmm. a man and mm -hmm. anybody else, any other permutation, whether it's a father over their child, an imam over a convert or whatever. It's the dynamic of power. Yes. And the sense that if I don't do what this person says, there will be ramifications. Yes. There will be consequences. Yes. I am going to suffer as a mm -hmm. result of not doing what this person says. And what this person is asking me to do, I'm not comfortable with. But yep. I can't just say no. Yep. I can't just say no, because if I do just say no, other stuff is going to happen. There are, those there are consequences. There are right? consequences. And I think in the Muslim community, we, so this, that the hashtag Me Too movement is a wider, mm. a wider cultural phenomenon. Yeah. And I think personally, I think it's a very healthy phenomenon. It's sort of like almost every day, it's another one bites the dust. Yeah. This sort of culture of you as a man in this power position have the freedom to objectify and treat women and harass women and abuse women in any way you want, that culture is being challenged. And, mm. and, and there's a question of, am I going to be the, for men, I'm sure there must be some kind of dialogue there yeah. that is at there where they're asking themselves, am I next? Yeah. yeah. Are my story is going to come out next? You know what uh, made me think that it's more about power than about gender was uh, Kevin Spacey. Yes. Uh, he's a man, mm -hmm. but of course he wasn't preying on young women. He was mm -hmm. preying on young men. Mm -hmm. But the same dynamic was at play. Right. He was the head of the theater, and he had the power. He's the Hollywood star. Right. You say no to him, again, there will be consequences. Right. So, it's, it's, always, know, it's always it's about power. power. It's, it's power. always about power. And that's why like, there are ethical boards that look at positions like bosses, but especially like psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. And pastors and priests and things like this. Because they're in here. Because they're right, they're right there in, yeah. the, in your head. Yeah. And I think for the Muslim community, if we want to really take this seriously and we want to benefit from the wider culture that we live in, mm -hmm. that it's important for us to, to set up an ethical standard for our imams, yeah. for our resident scholars, for our leaders or whatever. Yeah. And even for like, if, if you're a parent and you have a Quran teacher coming yeah. to, to the house... If your young daughter or even young son is saying, I'm not comfortable with that teacher, let's listen. This is it, because I think in a lot of our communities, I think, again, it's the issue of honor. Mm -hmm. And I think that in many of our societies, honor has always been more important than anything else. Yes. So what is the opposite of honor? Opposite of honor is shame. Yes. You accuse somebody in power of something, you have shamed him and therefore shamed yourself and your family. That's why so much abuse goes unreported. That's mm -hmm. why rape goes unreported. Incest, all these things that happen below the surface yeah. of a nominally genteel community. And I think it's, what you just said is right on target because what I feel like what you just said is that the entire Muslim community has to say, as a Muslim community, mm -hmm. hashtag me too. Mm -hmm. We do have these problems and we don't want to talk about them. Yeah. We do have rape. We do have... Incest. We do yeah. have sexual harassment and sexual yeah. abuse. Yeah. We do have all these things. And we don't want to have them. But the way to get away from them is not to be an ostrich it's and bury to, ourselves it's in it's the sand. It's not to them under the carpet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's to stand up and face it yeah. and really bring to it the prophetic strength and beauty of the... Uh, of the really beautiful morals of our early of our early people. Exactly. I think when you basically... Because if you have... In, in the case that you've described, if you have to weigh up the morals and the ethics that we've been taught as Muslims, okay? Yeah. And then the izza or the dignity or the pride or honor of your community or your family or your tribe or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. In most of our history that we know, it's always been the izza is higher 
well, is yet heavier than the than the morals, than the mm-hmm. standard, than mm-hmm. the principle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if there is a principle of protecting the weak and vulnerable in this deen. There is a principle of protecting the children and the women. I'm sorry, people might consider that to be anti-feminist or whatever. Oh, you know, women have agency, they can do whatever. But there is actually prophetic guidance on safeguarding the women, mm-hmm. looking after the women, looking after the weak, the masakin, etc. So principally, we have those foundations. But what happens yeah. is, again, back to the status quo, in order to protect those interests, you are going to have to ruffle some feathers. Yep. In order to protect these people, you have to hold power to account. Yes. And power does not want to be held to account. No. Power wants to stay all powerful, right? <laughs> right. And wants to maintain the status quo. So as a community, again, like you said, we have to make a choice. Are we going to respect the principle and uphold the haq, the, the, the rights of the people who are being oppressed? Or are we going to safeguard the rights of the people who are oppressing and preserve their dignity and their reputation and all that kind of thing? Because that's what's happening. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening. Oh, it's exactly what's happening. And then the, the, oh, the deep problematic piece of that is that when we continue to applaud the oppressor and then as Muslims get upset when other people applaud our oppressors as Muslims, no matter who they are, we should go sit down in the corner. Because until we find within our community the strength to say to the oppressor, get, stop, get off the stage. Just get off the stage, give me the mic, sit down, go get some help. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, when he said to his companions, help your brother, whether, he's an, whether he is yes. oppressor or oppressed, they were surprised. So they said, can, Ya Rasulullah. How can we help him? Yeah, we understand how to help the oppressed. Yeah. How do we help the oppressor? And really today, unfortunately, I would say that we would not answer like that. We would not say we understand how to help the oppressed because we don't seem to act like we do. We help the oppressed by saying, be patient. No, 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 no. This man is a very good man. How could you be telling the truth? Because we know this man is yeah. a good man. Yeah. We help the, we, we don't help the oppressed. Instead, no. we help the oppressor to continue oppressing. Yeah. We are, we're enablers. We're, we're enablers. enablers. Yeah. We're enablers. And yet, when it comes to us as a community and our political situations, our economic mm-hmm. situations, our uh, social situations, we expect and so, people to we, stand for justice. And to we stand expect up and people, pull people out. To mm-hmm. stand for justice and stand with us. Yeah. I think really that if we want to deserve for people to stand shoulder to shoulder with us and lift us up out of the and help as us. As the lift oppressed, up, right? In right. That, in, as the oppressed. Yeah, then we, we need to. Yeah. We need to look deeply inside of ourselves and just say, it's, you know, hashtag, I don't know what the hashtag is, but hashtag, it's over. Like, hashtag, yeah. that's enough. Hashtag, yeah. no, never again. Yeah. Like, really, yeah. you know, it's a very sad thing. I uh, knew once a young woman whose Quran teacher had, uh, had abused her. And for this young girl, the Quran then became equivalent to the abuse. The ramifications of this are really serious, really serious. And we as a community have to be strong and more serious than, than, uh, than this really devastating problem that is really real. I mean, the thought of being abused by your spiritual guide or your spiritual teacher, in any way, emotionally abused, physically, sexually, any type of abuse, you know that's going to affect your faith. Yes. You know that's going to affect your connection. It has to, because this was the conduit. Right. This was the way that guidance came to you. This was the person that you believed Allah sent to guide you. It's such a fitna. And that betrayal there is just... You know, I, I think oh, no. that um, the example of Salman... There, there are two things I want to say. One is the example of Salman al farisi is an example for everyone. Mm-hmm. In that his first uh, teacher was a fraud. <laughs> he was the worst of the worst. He, 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 what do you say about him? He had never met anyone worse than him. He, ch- he cheated money. Who knows what all, the, all, all, all of the things that he did. But this didn't, t- for Salman al farisi it didn't turn him away from the path and the journey of truth. Yeah. Nor did it turn him away from finding a new teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the reward for Salman al farisi was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I think a couple of things. I think on one hand that I've heard a lot of rhetoric out there that says, don't trust teachers. We can't elevate people. Don't trust them. They're going to fall mm-hmm. apart. 
And I think I think a couple of things about that. One is that I think that's dangerous. It's very dangerous to tell our society, don't trust your religious teachers because what we're really doing there is we're, we're building a, 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 we're really separating yeah. between those who are learned and those who are who are not, and yeah. we're stopping the the sort of process of yeah. learning. Yeah. On the other hand, I do think it's a good idea to teach young women, especially, how to recognize and and use that hashtag Me Too and just say no, that's isn't it, and and stand with her and listen to her. Yeah, I think uh, you know, as you said, you've got a situation where I think a lot of women, maybe men too, but in this situation, it seems to be, and also because of the power dynamics in our community. Uh, you know, it seems to be women falling prey to these yes. these types of behaviors, if you like. One of the things I think is that a lot of sisters suffer from low self-esteem mm -hmm. and they don't know what to expect or what they can demand from mm -hmm. any interaction with right. a male. Okay. Right. So you've got that classic scenario of that girl who may be low self-esteem, doesn't think that much of herself. The guy says a few sweet words to her and she's 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 she's, she's putty in his hands. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of sisters are very naive in that sense. Mm -hmm. I think they trust very quickly. And if a brother just says the right things, this is the right Islamic things, oh, I want to marry you, you know, I want to work to gender with you, you know, all this, I want you to be my wife in gender, all of this type of thing. She is blown away by that and no longer has her guard up mm -hmm. and doesn't remember what her boundaries are. So if you know, as a young woman, for example, there's certain, be there's certain, there's certain boundaries I don't cross and I don't allow anyone to cross with me. So the first time he sends you that WhatsApp message, which says, show me a picture of you, a girl who's woke is going to say, uh, hey, nah, I know where this is going. I get what you're trying to do. It's a no. Mm -hmm. The insecure girl is like, wants to see me? Right. Should I? Shouldn't I? You right. know, the butterflies start going and it's all become this exciting thing and whatever. And actually, yeah, Muslim Bilal made a little film about this. Mm -hmm. And he was looking at how, um, just how it's step by step. And we know it's step by step. It's always step by step, right? Uh, and unfortunately, any girl out there who is less confident, less grounded in her deen and in her spiritual growth is going to fall prey to any predator that's out there. Yeah, and they are predators. To, he just has to throw a few gems right. and ask for certain right. things, and you know how it goes. Because once you've sent a picture, he wants another picture. He wants a different kind of picture. And once he has those pictures, if you don't send any more, they do this crazy stuff. Okay, I'm going to tell everyone. I'm going to put on social right. media if you don't send me another one. Now she's in a situation of shame mm -hmm. and guilt and not being able to speak to anybody about it. And it's probably are many, many, many girls being many. taken... Yeah. taken Taken advantage of in this way, and not just girls, women too. Right. And you know, so we talked about a couple of things there. We talked about the grooming of young women yeah. to be preyed upon. Yeah. And I think both of us want to be careful of coming off like we're doing victim blaming, because certainly oh, there's no. no right, there's no, no, no victim no. blaming here, and a victim is a victim because there's a power scenario. Yeah. And I think but but I do think that it's okay to recognize the um I do think it's okay to recognize the forces at play that have allowed our cultures to to close their to close our eyes at this and really to really do victim blaming in ways that were like in the 1950s in America when when young people were um, when young women would be, get pregnant for example yeah. and to, I'm, I'm talking about these Catholic homes for yeah, young yeah. women who would get pregnant. They'd be sent off, you know, to have the baby and come back. As if nothing happened. As if nothing had happened. And their baby would be taken away from them. And all these stories that are being written and narratives that are being written around that. But we're really forgetting about, well, what happened at that time that allowed such, allowed someone to prey on and become a predator for these young women, essentially putting them in positions they didn't want to be in. Yeah. And here we have, in our community today, we have we have this this problem where young women are allowed, young boys or older men, sometimes imams and sometimes Quran teachers. And and I'm going to interrupt myself to say that in a meeting that I was at, where a number of women asked for the local sort of male leadership mm -hmm. to hear them out mm -hmm. about these problems in the community, so that we could try to do something about it. Instead of 
hearing us out. And we were not coming, and none of, we were all older. None of us were really coming to say this happened to me. Yeah. We were saying, we know it's happening because we we know we've heard these stories. Women talk to us. Yeah. We need to do something about it. Instead of feeling like we were being listened to, we were basically told, don't say that. What are you saying? What are you saying? Are you saying all of our imams abuse women? Mm. Abuse women? And we're like, no, of course we're not saying all of our imams abuse women. But we are saying some of them do, and we need to stop it, and we need to talk about it. And if we don't talk about it, we're not going to make it better. Yeah. But we were not allowed to. That meeting ended in a dead end. Wow. And it was excru excruciatingly frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so if someone like me, I'm very old, I'm older, and I have a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. and the other women with us, a lot of confidence. If we could be silenced wow. at that moment of just trying to talk about something, we were basically told there are other more important things to deal with. So that young woman, those are, what you know, what is this culture that we've given them? How do they even how do they even deal with it? It's just it's really s scary and sad. Yeah, I think you know the uh, what we're talking about contempt. Okay? Mm. Um, again, it's the pride. I think it's pride because for you to accept that there are problems mm -hmm. requires a degree of humility mm -hmm. and humility as individuals and humility as a community. Yeah. And I find that sometimes in our cultural spaces, especially when it's like a homogenous culture, mm -hmm. of course, we're all proud to be who we are. So if yes. you're Indian, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. If you're Afghani, alhamdulillah. If you're Nigerian, right. alhamdulillah. If you're mixed or black or whatever, you've got every right to be proud of who you are. Yeah. But what people forget is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned against Hizbiyyah. Mm. He warned against tribalism. And he gave a very stern warning against tribalism, which I shall not repeat here. But the point is, your culture is not infallible. Yeah. And the people of your culture are not infallible. Yes. And the values of your culture are not God-given. Mm. The values of your culture are not God-given. They are historical, social process. They're a result of a process, okay? Right. So once you've accepted that, you should be able to take a step back from your community, get some distance, okay, get some perspective, and say... We're really good at this. I love this about us. But you know what, guys? We need to work on that. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of communities are not at that stage. So there's yeah. a defense mechanism. Yes. As soon as you have anyone saying anything, it's a defense mechanism. And it happens, especially when the outside of the community, when it's pointed out from outside, say there's a particularly uh, controversial program, for example, right. where they sent in cameras and stuff and they filmed you and basically you've got your dirty laundry out in public. First thing, defense. Right. First line is always defense. And I remember doing my dissertation, this was something that came up because what would happen is when feminists would study Muslim societies and bring up problematic elements, so, you know, serious injustice, okay? Right. So, for example, women who are divorced and left with nothing right. or women whose children are taken away from them or blah, 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 all these things right. that are Islamically wrong. Right, but they were happening in Muslim were happening. societies. The first reaction defense mm -hmm. defense defense close ranks yeah when you close ranks and you're defensive it means your focus is on outside and what is being said outside and what yep. you're being accused of outside defending yourself from what's being said outside it means absolutely nothing on the inside of right. that line no work is being done there right because it's not being accepted mm -hmm. it's being deflected it's being said no 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 mm -hmm. that's not the case it's only this percent or it's only those people it's not us it's not us it's not us but in reality it is us yes it is us yeah but we don't take the time to come off the defensive mm -hmm. and become productive and proactive and proactive mm -hmm. we're always reacting yes we're always reacting rather than just acting mm -hmm. on what we know to be true, yeah. what we know to be the, the... We will continue to allow abuses until someone calls us out and shames us up. Then we have to stand up and say, mm -hmm. this is not Islam. Islam doesn't allow this. <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ said this. And during 1400 years ago, the Prophet ﷺ established blah, 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 blah. Right. But you were okay with it all that time until someone shamed you up about it. It's like racism. Right. Yep. Nobody was talking about racism in Islam until black people started to get upset. Yep. Black Muslims yep. started to call the Muslim community out and say, hold on a minute. Why is this happening? Why mm -hmm. is that happening? How come this? How come that? Right. Now we don't want to be seen as racist. So now we, all the rhetoric is coming out. Oh, mm -hmm. yo, you know, Bilal. No, 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 no. Don't bring the Bilal thing. Please, just don't. Just yeah. don't, because that's yeah. the one answer. It's like we were talking about when they talk about women in Islam. The first thing, the mother. 
Right. It's like, okay, bring out the showpiece, the mother. Right. Racism in Islam, bring out the showpiece. Bilal radiallahu anhu. No. Yeah. One of the beautiful things about, just the, just a footnote of Dawood Walid's book, Black Narratives mm. in Islam, is that he doesn't even talk about Bilal. Wow. That's it's a brave really move. really powerful. That's yeah, a really brave It's a really, really powerful book. If you haven't seen it, definitely look at it. But I really... But it's this defense yeah. thing. It's yes. this defensiveness. And I guess the defensive, this defensiveness comes from always feeling like we're under attack. But if yes. we constantly behave like a community under siege, mm -hmm. we cannot do the internal work that is necessary right. for us to heal. So, for example, when we did Sisters, people said, is it going to be a dawah magazine? I said, no. Why? Because when you're giving dawah to people, you're putting a best foot forward, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're put showing the best face, yes. okay? the inviting face, the Quran and Sunnah face, right? right. So we're not going to do that. Why? Because that's not our reality. Yes. And the more we focus on presenting an image to other people, the less likely we are going to do the work internally that needs to be done yes. and acknowledge whatever challenges we're having on the inside. That's where, for me, that's where the work is. Yes, and I agree. That is where the work is. And that's, we have to go right deep and we have to be courageous and yeah. brave. Yeah. And go into our communities and, and just find out how many people here are suffering from hashtag me too. Mm. Whether it's within or without the community, we need to stand with them and help them. We need to have a safe, the mosque, safe, safe place, safe, the safe space, spaces, yeah. especially in this area, in this arena. Yeah. And especially when it comes to men who represent faith, like Quran teachers yeah. and imams and teachers and this and that. And really, we have to be brave. Yeah. We have to be brave and we have to be strong and we have to we really have to stand with our women. I um I really believe we need to listen to women. And unfortunately, even that has become controversial. Mm. This idea that, oh wait, but they could be lying. Well, of course they could be lying, and so could the man be lying. Mm. There's always the possibility of every human being to lie. I yeah. mean, that's that's a possibility. But that doesn't preclude the importance of me doing discovery, mm. of me saying, I'm going to take seriously mm. and listen, mm. and I'm going to listen, I'm going to listen on all sides, mm. and maybe I'm not even going to listen by myself. Maybe I'm going to listen with some more people and really take this seriously, because I think that there, the second pain or the, the abuse or the oppression on top of the abuse and oppression mm is the abuse and oppression of being ignored. Yeah. Or not being believed. And not being believed. Yeah, being told you're lying. Yeah. It's just interesting you pointed out about, um, we talked earlier about Islam being revolutionary at the start. Yes. Okay. We were the revolutionaries. We yes. were the, the front runners, okay? The, 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 yes. the game changers, if you like. Absolutely. Fast forward a couple of centuries and you've got a community that is entrenched now mm -hmm. and power structures that are entrenched. Mm -hmm. And we're not revolutionary anymore. We're not brave anymore. What we're doing is preserving the status quo. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're talking about, not listening to the victims and upholding the rights of the oppressor. It all goes back to upholding the status quo. Yes. Maintaining yes. the power structure as it is. If you start to listen to children who are being abused by an imam, if you start to listen to them, mm -hmm. you're going to upset the imam. Remember what we talked about? Yep. As long as the man's good, we good. Then we're good, we're right, good, exactly. Right? So yeah. that, that takes courage, like you mm -hmm. said, but it's also prophetic. Mm -hmm. It's Islamic. Yes. It is not Islamic mm -hmm. to protect the oppressor no. and to care more for his reputation than the lives of the people that he's destroying. And this here, yeah. you see that happening again and again, again, and, again, and, again, and, again and again and again. How many times has it happened? We hear stories, you know, where she was raped by her uncle and the, the family yeah. hid it and said no because, you know, don't let him go to prison, but he has a family. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Was he really? thinking about that when he did what, what he did? Right, exactly. And what about her future? What about her future? You know, part of the hashtag, the world hashtag Me Too movement really looks at that, that what we're talking about here, men in power yeah. and women who either needed to keep their job or, and I really appreciated this, or had dreams. Because a lot of times they'll say to women, well, why didn't you just quit? Yeah. Why didn't you just walk out? Mm. And this piece of, well, they had dreams mm -hmm. and they, they wanted to continue walking in that path of their dreams. And I think about women who had dreams to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. had dreams to know the Quran, had dreams about themselves, and then in that space of that dream, mm -hmm. they were abused, and none not listened to. And now what, what is the answer to them? Are we really saying to them, oh, you should just walk out? 
Or are we saying to them, or are we going to change that? Are we going to start saying to women, talk to us. We're going to listen to you. This man, is it's done now. We're not going to give him the mic anymore. And if he holds the mic, we're not going to attend. We're not paying yeah. tickets. Mm -hmm. We're not coming in. We're not, we're not going to hire him at our spaces and places. I think that sends the message really to anybody in power yeah. to say, you will be held accountable. And for yeah. me, to be honest, I think in the Muslim community, I think that's one of the, for me as a, as a revert, it is one of the most frustrating things about our communities is mm. that there is no accountability. Yes. Take it away from imams and speakers. Just look at husbands. Yeah. Okay. Especially amongst reverts. I don't know how far true it is in like cultural Muslim communities, but I know in revert circles, the husband is not accountable to anyone. Right. Forget the wakil. Forget the wali. Oh, yeah, he is yeah, nothing. Yeah. Well, after he does that marriage, yeah. he is nothing. Right. He can't you, tell yeah. him to do anything. No. He no. can't tell and him to stop doing he's anything. In it. And he's not. He, and mm. even if she goes and complains, the wakil is like, you know, what, what can I do? He's your husband. Right. So this lack of accountability, again, 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 power structure, preserving right. the status quo, making sure those in power are okay and are appeased and the ego is appeased. Mm -hmm. But what happens as a result of that? You've left the vulnerable, yeah. the ones who are under those people, you've left them to fend for themselves. Oh. So where is the duty of care here? Where is the right of, as you said, the oppressed? Where's yeah. the justice? Where's the justice? Where is Umar in our Subhanallah. time? Subhanallah. Where is he? And, and, and we need to revive him. We need to bring him back. Mm. We, need to, we need to all be able to say, I am Umar. We have, um, at Rabata, we do different educational fundraisers. Our first was, I am Khadija. Mm -hmm. And that idea was that a man and a woman can say about themselves, I am Khadija. Mm -hmm. I think we need to also say today, I am Umar. Mm -hmm. I will stand against oppression. I will stand for justice. I will stand in what is right. I will worry in the day about the, what I need to do for the people of Allah. And I will worry in the night about what I need to do about my relationship with Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, we need, because we need deep changes now. It's enough. It's enough. We're tired. And we need to take care of our next generation and to leave a legacy. Yeah. And I really think, you know, sometimes people say, what are we going to do? Talking isn't enough. I disagree. I think talking makes a big That's difference. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. Yes. And like the hashtag Me Too movement made a big difference. Men are falling like flies out there. Yeah, yeah. From their jobs. And my husband... And, and rightly so. They should. And rightly so. My husband sends... My husband is like the, the era... My husband, who's, by the way, uh, he's half Syrian, half American, so he's really white. Like, he looks white. Okay. You know? He fits into the white community okay. very easily. Right. Um, and so he's, he's kind of, he tells me all the time now, the era of the white man is over. The era of, And he doesn't say it wistfully. He's like, it's about time. So <laughs> he's, he's really funny in that way. But, um, but really, I don't know that it's really true, and I don't know that we care about having an era of anyone be over. As Muslims, what we care about is that the era of oppression... And the era of um, abuse of authority and power, yeah, yeah, yeah. that that would be over, and that we would elevate the voices of victims yeah. and listen to them, so that we can set into place what needs to be done. Yeah. You know, it's it's, a, it's shocking to me, really, that in this day and age, with telephones that have cameras and video, with so many cameras in different places that we go, with Twitter and uh, Instagram and all the places that we sort of know where everyone is all the time, yeah. that people don't take into their own hands the sort of exposing of the people that are hurting them. Mm. It's surprising to me. No, for me, it's not surprising at all because, again, we're talking about Izza. We're talking about mm. your that name and thing. your reputation and honor and shame. and yeah. Those things are still very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, to get rid of them completely, obviously, probably anarchy, right? But, again... Which we don't want at all. We no. don't want that. We don't want the crazy, like, we can do anything, let it all hang out. No. That's not where we're going with this. But what we're going with is balance. There has to be some sense of balance between, okay, the honor of your person, or someone else's person, and the truth. And the truth yeah. and what the truth can bring. And if we come back to misogyny, mm. we also have to have a balance between the honor of that man... And the honor of this woman. But this is what I'm saying. It's like because yeah. it's your honor too. Because right. you may not say anything out of fear of your own reputation as a woman. Okay? Ah, I see That's what I mean. So if you don't say anything out of fear for your own reputation, see, yeah. there is a trade-off there. Yes, there is. You've traded the truth for a good reputation. And, and you've traded it. the future because what's going to happen to the people after this? Yes. yes, exactly. What will happen to all of these people? 
who are, continue to to go to that space. So we through that yeah. mill, basically. Yeah, we had a problem in Chicago, in America, with a situation like this, where people had, for years, had been in the same place yeah. and facing this type of yeah. abuse, and then that affected them. And so it's really, it's a really serious issue, and that question that stands between honor and not airing dirty laundry and yeah. Yeah. dignity and all yeah. of that, and stands between... The truth and justice. The truth and justice. Yeah. That's a space where I think we've aired for a long time so. here. If and you, we need to come over this here. Is a, if, I mean, if you look at any of the people who over the last few decades have made a difference in the world, they always chose truth, if you notice that, mm. at personal cost. Every single time it was at personal cost. Mm -hmm. Look at the civil rights movement. Yeah. Anything to do with Palestine, anything to do with any apartheid, any any situation where injustice was the norm the people who stood up and made a difference so we yeah. read about them now in our history books they did it because they championed truth at the expense of their person at and the expense yes, of their lives sometimes. a lot of expense and, and many times people didn't believe them it took yeah. them saying it many 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 times until other people started to yeah, say it with exactly, them exactly exactly and that's when change happened yeah. and it's i think it's that courage really so it's channeling that courage and that, that righteousness, really, to say, you know yeah. what, this is true, I know this to be true, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do the right thing, and whatever comes my way, Allah is my, Allah is my wakil. Yeah, absolutely. Allah is my wakil, you know, and uh, I think it's, it's subhanAllah, if, if I only knew how to distill that, mm -hmm. the Malcolm X, you know, the, 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 the Ravi, the, the, yeah. the Rosa Parks, the, the Mandela's, the, you know, the, the people really who believed in something so they, much that they were prepared to die for it. Really. And, and we're not talking about jihad here and extremism and no, stuff no, like no, that. No, 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 but, but really, I think what we recognize, if we really look at the biographies of, of people of the civil rights movement in mm -hmm. America, what I see is a decision moment yeah. when they made a decision to risk everything mm -hmm. for this truth. Yeah. And I think that it is time for us to distill that mm -hmm. And to make that decision to say, no, you know what, I'm going to risk you, the general you, talking about me, so that I can put a stop to this abuse of power that is happening daily in our communities. And really, I think that I would like to say in this setting, this sort of media setting, that young girls who are not being listened to, women are not being listened to, can reach out to someone else, find someone who yeah. will hear you. Yeah. If one person tells you be patient with haram and abuse, yeah. so that person has abused you again, go find someone else. Yeah. Be Salman al Farisi, who Don't didn't give up, give up yeah. on finding those people who were good and would yeah. help him. And yeah. his reward was the Prophet Exactly. And so I would say, keep on going and find a woman. She'll listen to you. And if she doesn't listen to you either, go to another one. And you'll find people yeah. who yeah. will who will lift your voice and help you to be... Um, Help to help the oppressor stop oppressing. You know, for me, it's more, it's it's really like if we all believe that we have a purpose in this mm -hmm. dunya, and we believe that Allah is Al Razak, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the one who will protect your reputation. There's even du'a related to this. He'll protect my name, mm -hmm. protect my reputation. He is the one who will guide your family. He is the one who will protect your reputation. He's the one who will safeguard your rizq. All of it. Again, we're going back to the Tawhidi system. Back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So why should we fear the people? Why should we fear a man or a woman or right. a troll or, or right. anybody? Why should we fear the people yeah. when Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala is the wakil? Right. And if nothing else, to be part of the change that you want to see, for me that is so vital. Mm. If you see a haram, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. Change it with your hand. Yeah. If you cannot change it with your hand, with what? Speak against it with your tongue. If you cannot do that, at least hate it in your heart, and that is the lowest form of iman. So to live with that sense of purpose that, okay, I'm not just here just to fill in some air or some right. vacant space. I'm here for a reason. Right. Yeah. Allah has put me here with a purpose. And if I find myself in a position where I can say a word to an individual or on a tweet or on a message board somewhere and I can say a word for the mm -hmm. truth, mm -hmm. we should be of those who speak and stand for the truth. We Not those a, yes. who, you know, kind of are hiding behind, Absolutely. you know, away from the fitna or all this type of thing. I couldn't agree more. It's, we absolutely have to 
stand up for truth, be brave, yeah. risk human disapproval yeah. to gain divine approval. Yeah. And sometimes that is hard to do. And sometimes we're taken by a gang mentality mm. where our entire community continues to say, well, no, 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 this person can't be whatever. Mm. And so then we're afraid to say it. Mm -hmm. And and we just continue to give that microphone and that platform. And really, um, I don't even know what to say. I, I have my own personal frustrations about things like that. Mm -hmm. I just feel that as a, as a community of justice and a community of truth and faith and joy in faith, yeah. that this should be at the top of our yeah. priority list to just really say, that's it, that we're done, we're done, we, we, we're done, we're done. And really hold men to high standards of behavior mm -hmm. and within homes, as we talked about this earlier, is, yeah. but also in public yeah. and in private that flirting and um, abusing and harassing women is not acceptable. I mean, think about this for a minute. In Hollywood, Hollywood, yeah. that is sort of the machinery of the performance of power and sexuality and all of this. In that space, people are saying, no more. In that space. But we, as Muslims, in our space, our spiritual space. Our spiritual <laughs> space of faith. And, and we modesty are like and, and modesty and all and, of this wonderful Yes, stuff. and like in particular rules about how many women interact yeah. with one another and, and professionalization of behaviors and relationships. In that space, mm -hmm. we are so chicken to say no more. Mm -hmm. It's it's a shame. And so we should be ashamed of ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in this space. We are, if, we, if someone out there knows an imam who's hurting a girl and is quiet because that imam is important, shame on you. Yep. If a young woman goes to someone and tells the truth in tears and pain, and that person says, be patient, be quiet, it's shame on you. The one who says, be patient, be quiet. If we are in this situation where we're comparing our faith world, we're comparing our faith world to Hollywood, mm -hmm. and we're the losers... And we're the ones who are not accomplishing things. Oh my goodness! We're not doing very well. Oh my goodness! What? what I, don't, I don't even know what to say. But I think that, you know, <laughs> with regards to that, we have seen some changes even here in the UK. There was a very, very famous case of a, of a man who was found soliciting a young boy, and wow. when it came out, he actually was uh, fired and ostracized from the community. And ten years ago, I don't think that would have happened. Uh, mm -hmm. I think 10 years ago, it would have been kind of swept under the carpet mm -hmm. and, you know, people just would have hushed it down and not made, you know, any fuss about it. But uh, I think the community is changing. I think the community is changing. I don't know. I hope so. I, I don't know that. Um, I don't know. I hope so. I, I really hope I hope it is. I my my experience over the past year has been that the community really pushes back and doesn't want to hear about imams mm. making mistakes. And if they do make mistakes, they want to forget really quickly and put them back in the limelight. Mm. And um, I'm really, I really, this comparison between Hollywood and the Muslim community is really sad for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because our goals are completely different. And yet. And yet our mm. reality, the difference of our reality is shameful really at this mm. point in this particular arena. Time. Allah, yeah. yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us to, to be of those who stand up for justice I mean, and help. I mean to change this so that our mosques and our spaces become safe for seekers along yeah. the path. You know? I think that's that's what we want across the board, really, is yeah. those safe spaces. Because everybody needs them. Everybody needs them. Yeah, they'll make it easy for us to be um, part yeah. of the rebirth, if you like, of safe spaces and safer spaces within our communities where we can all grow and heal. I think yeah. a lot of us need space to be able to heal as well yeah. as grow. Make us brave. Yeah. <laughs> Make us brave so that we can speak up and speak out and uh, not be bullied into silence. Yeah, definitely. Touch. <laughs> okay. Keep the faith.